Hey guys, welcome to my video. I am your host, the J-Man, and today I wanted to give you some follow-up thoughts on a world without Superman. In my previous video, I reviewed World Without Superman, and I just felt like I had a few more things to say about it. Um, some things I got to mention. This time I'm mostly going to be talking about Supergirl. Um, now Supergirl's role in this novel was was very prominent. Um, she became the replacement superhero for Superman after his death. Um, she kind of stepped up and took over the role of uh, the protector of Metropolis. And I think in that role she did a pretty decent job. The only problem I have with that is this particular version of Supergirl um, is very inferior, unpopular, um, and that is because this version of Supergirl is actually an alien referred to as Matrix, and this alien uh, has the ability to shapeshift, so the, the, the form that it chooses is Supergirl, the blonde, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes, and, you know, the alien itself is really weird looking, it has all these other, um, strange abilities and superpowers that you would not normally relate to Supergirl. For instance, this version of Supergirl has the ability to use pyrokinesis or pyrotechnic, you know, and shapeshift and some other things like that. But she, also, she can turn invisible. So, a really weird or convenient power set. But anyway, Supergirl plays an important role in this um, you can't really skip her part, so if you're not a fan of her, you just kind of have to bear it. Um, another thing about the Supergirl is she's like dating, or she's in a relationship with Lex Luthor II, but their relationship is very awkward, at least to me. It seems like he is controlling her, manipulating her, um, but he's doing it in a way that she doesn't, she's not aware of it. Um, so... I think she's in love with him and he pretends to be in love with her and I just feel like uh, you know that's kind of an awkward thing because she should be able to tell that he's manipulating her but anyway Supergirl becomes Metropolis's guardian and uh, the number one crime fighter um, Action Comics actually changed the title of the book from Action Comics Superman to Action Comics Supergirl for one issue which was in that um, world without a Superman. Um, other than that, what else we have here? Okay, and the death of Superman, that story was written, from what I understand, from what I've read, the creators at DC intended for that story to show the world how important Superman was, how important the character is, and you know the effect it would have on the world if if he were to die. So the follow-up to that is this book, A World Without a Superman. And in my opinion, that this book fails to to show or to emphasize the purpose of Superman or the importance. Um, even though there's a lot of characters that are mourning his death, you know, that's just, that, that's common. I mean, that's going to be pretty much with anybody. Um, but to Superman, it's a greater scale. But still, um, I felt like it kind of failed its purpose. Uh, let's see here. A, a World Without Superman merely touched upon preconceptions and distracted and confused its main plot, uh, ultimately delaying the inevitable and more exciting revival Return of Superman, which is a follow-up. Okay. So instead of World Without a Superman, um, instead of that, what it actually did was expose the lackluster of DC supporting cast and oddball, insignificant characters who flop around like fish out of water without their titular character to shine his righteousness on them. Speaking, of course, of Superman. So it kind of shows that the supporting cast isn't very good. Um, and the subplots that they come up with, uh, I, I think 
they could have done a lot better there. I mentioned that in the other video, but here I want to emphasize that um, the story, because of the format, it's you know being sold issue per issue. They had to include all, all these subplots. So for that, I can understand why they would include them. But um, it's just something you kind of have to accept uh, ahead of time before you get into reading the book. You should know that it's going to have all these little side stories. Um, like I said, because of the formatting. If they were to do a story that focused on just the death and return of Superman, it shouldn't have any of that in there. So, you know, like, like I said, the uh, animated version, Superman Doomsday, pretty much cut all of that out. Um, so, okay, more criticism of this book. Okay, talking about the um, supporting cast, their sympathetic story of how Superman touched their lives Further evidence that Superman himself wasn't necessarily all that important, but rather everyone else is incompetent without him. Never mind the expected lack of action, lack of any depth story. World Without a Superman serves up a generous portion of melodrama. Um, World Without a Superman milks every empathetic every ounce of empathy for all it's worth. Highly emotional, yet underwhelmingly intelligent. World Without a Superman makes allusions and borrows from, of all things, the death of Jesus Christ. It seems to get away with it. Um, still, World Without a Superman would be an ideal bridge between death and return if it weren't for all the bumps and detours along the way. Um, the story includes decent foreshadowing, allows for nice transitions into Return of Superman, uh, which I hope and I predict will be much, much better than uh, this story. Um, however, due to the many unforgivable and contrived subplots and random episodic plot wanderings, World Without a Superman makes for a poor series of integrated stories. So these stories are more like uh, separate um, episodic stories like I said here so the stories beg for editing organization and a more streamlined approach given all these factors I rate the story a five and a half out of ten overall slightly favorable and there's no denying the historical significance all right so there you have it that's uh, my final thoughts on world without a Superman giving it, restating my uh, previous rating, 5.5 out of 10. Don't forget to watch my next video, which is a review of the follow-up, Return of Superman. Thanks for watching. See you next time.